Hello everyone. Hope you all are doing well. This is the second part of our episode on CT pulmonary angiogram. In this episode, I'll share with you several cases and examples of how various types of artifacts affect the quality of CT pulmonary angiogram, the knowledge of which is essential for accurate interpretation of these studies. We'll also learn how to identify them, what measures can we possibly take to avoid some of these in future. So let's begin. Let's look at the first example. Okay. So what do you think is the, how is the quality of the scan? Look at the pulmonary tree. I mean, its contrast density is very similar to every other thing on the scan, isn't it? So I don't think this contrast specification is enough. Let's measure its house field units. Okay, there is one more. Yeah. So it's about 162, so which is far less than what we would normally like. And like I said before, it should be at least 250, the Hounsfield units. So what do you think is the reason for this poor contrast specification? Well, like I said before, there could be several reasons. But are there any reasons that we can find on this scan? Let's look at the images where, which were used to put the ROI to do the bolus tracking. Well, what do you think is happening here? I think this ROI is not placed on the pulmonary trunk. It looks somewhere probably just below the valve, just around it. So that's one reason, plus ROI is quite small. And uh, what else do we find here to account for this very suboptimal poor contrast specification? Okay, you can see that there is dense contrast in superior vena cava. So uh, the contrast has been given from the left arm and that part looks all right, but I mean, you, you do see quite dense contrast in the left ventricle, but despite having this high contrast density in superior vena cava, we are not able to have good contrast specification in the right ventricle compared to the left side. Well, there is another reason for this. Look at the IVC. What's happening here? Do you see a bit of contrast mixing? You see some of the peripheral contrast, which is probably reflux from the heart, but then there is a central low density area. So why do you think this is happening? To understand this, we need to first talk about the breathing technique used for routine CT chest studies. Well, during our routine studies, we, we ask patients to hold breath and we encourage them to do it during inspiration. The reason is with inspiration, the lungs expand and that's exactly what we need to assess the lung parenchyma for any pathologies. But this technique does not work very well for CT pulmonary angiogram. What do you think is the reason? Well, if the patients take in deep breath during CT pulmonary angiogram, you can imagine that the expansion of thorax reduces its pressure. This reduced intrathoracic pressure then draws in venous blood back to the heart and this affects inferior vena cava more than superior vena cava. The contrast filled blood from superior vena cava then mixes with unopacified blood from the inferior vena cava and when both of these mix within the right side of the heart you might not be able to see optimum contrast opacification in the main pulmonary trunk how do you think this can be avoided well it's simple ensure that you have a communication with your radiographers who are performing ct pulmonary angiograms to tell them about the significance of phase of breath holding on the quality of CT pulmonary angiogram. These hemodynamic changes adversely affect the quality of the scan and ideally patients should not be holding their breath during inspiration for a good quality CT pulmonary angiogram. Some people suggest uh, it's better to use uh, to breath hold during expiration. Some people do that because you can imagine that with expiration, the intrathoracic pressure would increase, which would reduce the preload with less chances of mixing of contrast filled blood with the uh, unopacified blood from inferior vena cava but generally it is recommended to be not specific about at either extreme side of the respiration so ideally the patients should hold their breath in normal breathing well breath holding is definitely very important because without that we would uh, face a lot of uh, respiratory breathing artifacts but this breath holding should not be in either extreme phase of respiration so patients should be breathing normally and when advice to hold their breath, they can just hold their breath there and then without any excessive or forced inspiration or expiration. Let's look at this example now. Well, there does look like good contrast specification of the pulmonary tree, but I don't see any definite filling defects. Okay, so what's happening here? Do you see this linear filling defect here? So when you see these kind of filling defects, it's useful to follow them through to see if these vessels are branches from the pulmonary arteries or veins. 
So that's what we would do first. So this has joined this and then it's going back to pulmonary artery. So it's definitely a branch, one of the branches of the pulmonary artery. So do you think this is pulmonary embolism or not? Well, when I see these linear kind of defects, especially in the lower pulmonary arteries and even more especially if it's in the left lower lobe, I always like to differentiate them from artifacts. Which particular artifacts? Either due to breathing, movement or cardiac motion because a lot of these patients who are coming for CT pulmonary angiogram have tachycardia and uh, also they have shortness of breath so these things can affect the quality of scan and the best way to exclude any movement artifacts or breathing artifacts uh, is to look at this area on lung window so what do you think what's happening here and let's look at the quality of scan do you see some artifacts adjacent to part and do you see some movement and blurring in this part of the lung? So there looks like some artifact here, isn't it? Th this is a good example to show you how the artifacts can affect the left lower lobe particularly. And this patient ended up having a VQ scan and I'll show you that now. Okay, so... Here we go. So this looks pretty normal, isn't it? I don't see any abnormality, I don't see any defects. Well. Next, move on to the next case now. Well, this is a good example, I think, to show you the streak artifacts related to dense contrast in superior vena cava. Uh, so it, it, in these cases, it's useful to look at multiple planes and uh, know about this artifact. Some people, like I said before, use saline bolus to get rid of these artifacts after contrast administration. Again, you can see a bit of uh, odd contrast phasing. You can see that the contrast in the pulmonary trunk is not as dense as anywhere else in fact in, if you look at the left lower lobe in fact both lower lobes you can see that the pulmonary veins are more densely opacified with contrast than arteries this makes the study suboptimal and again the reason is some some mixing of the unopacified blood from inferior vena cava with contrast coming from superior vena cava because of uh, imaging during peak inspiration Okay, another example where uh, you can see good contrast specification of the pulmonary trunk, but uh, just eyeballing it looks like the main pulmonary trunk is dilated. Okay, so let's look at the other features now. Uh, we don't see much of contrast. Reflux in IVC. Yeah, let's measure the ventricular diameters now. Let's look at the, let's measure the left ventricular diameter first, which is about 5.1 centimeter. And uh, the right ventricular diameter, I think it's maximum here. It's about 4.5 so it's not greater than the left ventricular diameter so in this case we wouldn't say that there are any signs of increased right heart strain well um i mean like i said before we need to measure the maximum short axis diameter of both chambers and it may not even be on the same plane however if you are able to find both the diameters on the same plane then that is better than having to measure them on the different planes the reason is the sizes of the, the diameters of these chambers vary with cardiac cycle. So you can imagine that a different slice might be in a different uh, phase of the cardiac cycle and this can um, make the measurement less reliable. But if we are not able to find them at the same level, then that's fine too. Okay, so that's that. All right, there's another important thing that I want to highlight here. Let's change the window again to make it more friendly for pulmonary arteries. Okay, so we don't see any definite embolism here. However, you can see that the vessels appear a bit attenuated in the lower lobes. Well, if you see your feeling defects like these um, or poor opacification, always first follow it back to where it's coming from. So these unopacified vessels are actually pulmonary veins, not arteries. The arteries are um, actually opacified. However, sometimes in the areas of consolidation and collapse, you might see poor opacification of the pulmonary arteries, which is not related to embolism or filling defects. The reason is that in the areas of uh, um, consolidations and other lung pathologies, uh, the pulmonary arteries undergo increased resistance and uh, hypertension. In, the, in these areas, due to due to hypoxia and other factors and shunting of blood and all, the, you might see vasoconstriction. So the apparent filling defects are due to vasoconstriction rather than true embolic filling defects. 
And in these areas, then it's extremely difficult to exclude PE. However, uh, most of the times, these would be very subsegmental uh, divisions. And uh, you just need to mention them that in the report that you're not able to confidently exclude PE at the subsegmental levels. And many times, the clinicians would not like to repeat the scans because uh, the emboli at that lower level sometimes not very relevant um, because these patients are going to get managed conservatively anyway. Okay, so as usual, we would look at the lung windows oh, bring it down first so you can see a lot of uh, peribronchial thickening distal infiltrates um, some nodularity some endobronchial thread of infection that extends into the middle lobe as well and again some in the upper lobe so this patient uh, does not have PE they don't have uh, elevated right heart pressures the main pulmonary trunk is uh, uh, dilated but this patient is actually suffering from lung infection that could explain their symptomatology all right let's move on to our next example well, again, you can see that the contrast specification in pulmonary tree is suboptimal. It was actually 166 Hounsfield units, which is well below our uh, preferable value of uh, 250 Hounsfield units. Well, in this patient, the reason for this uh, poor opacification was related to their hemodynamic changes because this patient was pregnant. Well, normally in pregnancy, we would not perform CT pulmonary angiogram unless it is inevitable. Um, so uh, it is quite challenging to do the study during pregnancy because of um, all the hemodynamic changes related to hemodilution and then uh, changes in blood pressure, heart rate, um, breathing, all these factors together with hormonal changes, they all impact the quality of scan. And generally, these studies are uh, suboptimal to start with. This is an ex interesting example of how flow parameters are affected by variant vascular anatomy. So you can see that the contrast specification in the pulmonary trunk is quite dense and uh, actually looks quite optimum. However, if you look at the lower low pulmonary arteries, it becomes quite low density, isn't it? I don't think in the lower lobes it's adequate for uh, optimum image interpretation. What do you think is the reason? Let me make it a bit smaller. Okay, there you go. So. Do you see anything unusual in this case? Well, look at the contrast. It's been given through left arm. And you can see the contrast opacifying the vein over here. But did you see it's not joining the SVC on the right side? So this patient actually has duplicate SVC. The right-sided SVC is not opacified with contrast, but the left SVC is. And uh, then it drains into the right ventricle through the coronary sinus. And this has resulted in contrast mixing with unopacified blood coming through the superior vena cava on the right side. So this kind of vascular variant anatomy can also produce significant artifacts. Well, another reason for artifacts in the lower lobes, as I discussed before, uh, could be related to movement. Or the movement and respiratory artifacts affect the lower lobes greater than the upper lobes. The reason is, first of all, uh, in the left lower lobe, obviously, it's, it's in close proximity to the heart. And the left ventricle and um, like I said before many times these patients have tachycardia which can then produce um, movement related cardiac motion related artifacts but also if the patient is not able to hold their breath during the scan the diaphragms move and then this affects lower lobes greater than the upper lobes so some centers acquire the images from caudal to cranial direction rather cranial to caudal so that even if the patient is not able to hold their breath during the scan, so the lower lobes are not affected because like I said before, the breathing affects lower lobes more than the upper lobe. So you can imagine that the imaging is being done from caudal to cranial fashion. You start acquiring imaging from the lung bases and going upwards and the patient is not able to hold their breath midway. Then by that time, you the scan would have already reached the upper lobes. And like I said before, upper lobes are not as much affected as the lower lobes by breathing or respiratory movements. So that's another useful point. Well, in this patient, obviously you can see there are small bilateral proliferation, so they have underlying cardiac functional impairment as well. I think we have covered the artifacts in uh, quite detail. We will look at some cases of uh, pulmonary emboli now and we'll try to differentiate the acute from chronic PE. Thank you for joining me in this tutorial. If you found it helpful, please like, share and subscribe for more content. For any questions or feedback, feel free to drop a comment below. Until next time, happy learning.